All right, Wayne Bettis here, the founder of the Off The Tools podcast. I just want to introduce you to our brand new sponsor, directplumbingsupplies.com. It is founded by a former tradesman who has set up his own plumbing and heating merchants. He has an online shop, which is obviously at directplumbingsupplies.com, and he delivers across the UK. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome to another instalment of the Trades Grove Summit. Today, I am delighted to introduce Mr. AJ Roberts, who is a coach, a speaker, a podcast host. And today, he is going to help us all become the best version of ourselves. Welcome to the Trades Grove Summit, AJ. Uh, mate, oh, no, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, fantastic uh, charity as well, obviously, Help for Heroes, who I'm uh, actually associated with. So it's, uh, you know, it's my absolute pleasure uh, to to give back a little, um, you know, they've helped me uh, and they can still continue to do so. So, um, yeah, it's an absolute honour. Lovely. Uh, yeah. As you all know, you know, the whole the whole reason we're putting this this event on is to raise as much money for Help for Heroes as possible. So if you haven't, do- well, if you haven't donated, you wouldn't be watching this. Um, but if you have donated and you can afford to donate again, please help us um, because Help for Heroes helps men and women across the country every single day, you know, and without the support of the public and the the funds that are raised for events like this, you know, Mm. they can't do the work that they need to do. So please head over. Um, I'm now going to hand the baton over to AJ, who is going to give us a a wonderful bit of time now. And uh, yeah, so sit back and enjoy and uh, let's, let's see. Yeah, thanks, mate. And um, I just wanted to echo your point quickly before I started uh, about the Help for Heroes thing. So um, it cast back 10, 15 years ago, obviously Help for Heroes was in the eyes of everybody because they were helping people coming back from Afghanistan who were truly bad, you know, badly injured and, and stuff like that, mental health problems. But because there's no wars on now, people don't associate, you know, the potential need for it. But now more than ever, is you know, is Help Heroes needs this help because there's just a huge amount of veterans uh, and people who served in, in conflicts, you know, in Afghanistan and before who have really suffered over the last 12 to 18 months through like the pandemic and what it's done to their own lives, you know, circumstances. Um, so, you know, charities like Help for Heroes often get forgotten about when there's no actual like wars on. So it's, you know, vitally important now more than ever that Help for Heroes gets the help it deserves because they, they are doing a fantastic job. So I just wanted to kind of, touch on that point mate before i started i, I, I definitely echo that because it's sort of like in a in a horrible way it's out of sight out of mind isn't mm. it you yeah know, we, we're yeah. not seeing we're not seeing the bloodshed and the and the the fighting and the and the news reels telling us about all these conflicts so we just presume that everyone's fine and there's no one suffering anymore when mm. it, yeah it, could it be further from the truth could it mm. yeah exactly and you know i speak to people on a weekly basis who are suffering me- mentally you know just uh just as a, just to pull up a sandbag as we like to say and have a chat with people but yeah there is uh, you know there is real suffering happening so yeah please get behind it um so guys i want to talk to everybody today about literally becoming the best version of yourself so um i served in the military 15 years i was in the royal engineers served in iraq and afghanistan sierra leone um and traveled to other places around the world uh, spanning that 15 year period um had lots of ups had lots of downs you know which comes as part of territory of being in the military so i wanted to share with you guys today a um, bit about my journey and how I got to where I got to now and uh, how we can become the best version of ourselves, even through times of adversity. So I'm uh, just going to share my screen. Here we go. You see that? Uh, yep, that's come up perfect. Excellent. Cool. So um, that's myself, AJ Roberts, as I mentioned before. Okay, so a bit about my, my story then, guys. Um, I'm the big bro uh, of four brothers. So um, we grew up in Germany. My dad was always uh, away because he was serving as well. Uh, he was a former Royal Engineer for 25 years. So he's always in Bosnia and Kosovo. So I kind of had to like grow up quick and look after my brothers while mum was out working and stuff like that. And uh, I had to yeah grow up very quick. I was like ironing their clothes and doing lunch boxes and stuff by the time I was 12, I think. 
Um, but for me personally, football was everything that mattered. Like I literally would come home, drop my bag, go straight out, play football, come home when it was dark or when I was hungry, um, uh, you know, rain, wind or shine. I was always out playing footy. That's all I ever wanted to do is become a professional football player. Um, I did gain really great grades at school. Uh, I'm one of those really annoying people that just like takes in all the information, just remembers it and then can regurgitate it in an exam. Uh, so I didn't really do any revision because I was just too busy playing football. Um, but I got great grades at school, which is, you know, it was really good. We had a fantastic school set in uh, over in Germany in uh, British Forces School. Um, but then I was scouted uh, by AFC Bournemouth uh, off the back of my parents, uh, writing to them and asking them to come scout me. And they watched me in a tournament in Denmark. Um, I went for a trial and uh, they wanted to sign me. So I signed for them in July 1999. I then went to... Uh, went back to Bournemouth to go to college as part of that youth training scheme. Um, things were going exceptionally well. Um, I was probably looking at about five or six months away from turning pro. Um, I was I played a few first, first team reserve games. Um, and then unfortunately, just one Sunday evening, having a kickabout with my cousins uh, uh, playing for his uh, work team as a favour, I uh, clashed knees with somebody and I severed the nerve um, across my knee which actually stopped me feeling anything in my toes for about sort of three months. Obviously, AFC Bournemouth at the time weren't like the club they are, stature they are now. So from the medical point of view, and obviously being in the youth setups, and anybody who knows what it's like, it's quite cutthroat. Um, they basically said they can't see me getting back to full fitness again. So they, uh, they released me. And that was it. Like everything I ever dreamed of doing, becoming, was gone. This led to... An unfortunate downward spiral. Uh, started drinking loads, like hanging around with the wrong crowds. Then started going to like house parties. Then recreational drugs started to come into the play. And then I got involved in sort of like low level crime. Um, just basically lost myself completely. Absolutely lost myself. You know, like so many do when they you know come up with sort of traumatic incidents, which completely changes the tra trajectory of their lives. Um, this, the crimes that I committed obviously led me to getting arrested. Um, luckily for me, I actually went into the army recruiting office the day before and I inquired about joining the British Army. Um, at that point, I was kind of questioning what I was doing. You know, this is what I wanted in my life. You know, it wasn't really doing anything for me. I, there was nothing positive about it. So I, I inquired about joining the army. Um, Obviously, I knew a lot about the military for being in the military life uh, for my dad, but I thought the time's right for me to make a change. Um, so I actually went in there and actually walked out, signed up, like all within the same morning. Um, next day, I got arrested with a few friends. Um, we then ended up having to go to court. I went to court and the judge said to me, um, either join the army or... I go to jail with my friends who both got two and a half years each. So that was it. It was a bit of a no brainer. You know, if you're ever faced with an ultimatum like that, it just uh, makes perfect sense to uh, not go to jail and, uh, and join the army. And it was uh, some of the best years to come. So as, as I mentioned before, I spent 15 years in the Royal Engineers, served in UK, Germany, Canada, Poland, Sierra Leone, Brunei, um, as well as operational tours and events training all around North America, Europe, uh, and some places in Asia as well. And um, obviously, uh, military service over that period comes with quite arduous tours of Iraq and Afghanistan. That's myself there with my, uh, my section of merry men. Um, unfortunately, being in the military sometimes comes as a cost, you know, depending on well, you know, what regiments you're in and what you actually, what you do. Um, in 2010, we, uh, me and my friends there, as you can see, uh, carried and laid our good friends, Sergeant Andrew Jones, to rest, who was killed in Afghanistan. Um, his wife asked his friends to bury him. Um, that was a very, very emotional period of time, to say the least. Um, something I'll never forget. It was uh, extremely emotional. Um, but it was a very, very clear indication of, the fallouts of war and the, uh, you know, and the cost of lives. Then in 2011, uh, December, in Afghanistan as a commander, 
Uh, we lost one of our lads, Bondi. Um, he was ejected from the vehicle due to a blast. Um, I say luckily he died uh, of head injuries in UK in hospital with his family around him, you know, so at least some positive commiserations come out of it. Um, a really young lad, but, you know, he found, had a fantastic future in front of him. And it was a really, really tragic incident uh, where other people were injured as well. And then on the 6th of March 2012, um, we lost six six guys out the back of our fob, uh, fob we were on. There was a huge explosion. Um, the warrior they were in went over a, a huge IED that had been there for some time. Uh, it was a 100 kilo charge. And they all six instantly lost their lives. Um, the repatriation of that vehicle and the guys was uh, something that I'll never forget. It was a horrendous, horrendous experience. Um, and apart from Coops, who's in the top left, the other five guys were 19, 20, 21. So very, very young guys with a bright future. Um, after that tour, in 2012, I left them. I, I signed off to leave the military because I had an opportunity to move to Australia with my family. At this point, I'd done 12 years, so I was kind of like my half pension stage. So it was a bit of a opportunity not to go miss, basically. So it was to move to the Gold Coast in Australia, where we lived. That was uh, just down the road from where we lived there, uh, a place called Corumbin, um, off the skyline of the Gold Coast. It was a, an unbelievable place to live. Uh, made so many great friends. Like, always down at the beach. It was myself there, my family. And you also get the fruits of the Australian culture. Sun, sand and uh, all right beer. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, uh, after I formed my own gym called Coach Combat, which was uh, based off of obviously being in the military and just adding that military spin. So I opened a strength and conditioning centre um, in the heart of the Gold Coast. Um, really great. I had loads of members there. Um, we had, always did little uh, events and stuff like that. And um, it was fantastic. I even had the defence minister in Australia come and do the grand opening for, for my gym. It was fantastic. Um, but unfortunately, the investor that came into our business um, royally screwed us over. And... As a result, it left us completely high and dry and all money just exhausted because of the overheads that was uh, left with the business. So the, inv the, the investment was to cover the overheads until we got a sustained profit to come in. He just basically done a runner uh, about a quarter of the way into the investment, left us high and dry. Uh, and we just literally ran out of all money. Um, so we had to return back to UK because obviously we didn't have any like direct support network over there. We came back with absolutely nothing. Came back with just like four bags on our back. Um, even at the airport, in Brisbane Airport, I had to take stuff out of the, out of the luggage because they were going to charge us for it and I had no money to pay for it. So it was like, it, it was a really, really hard time. Um, the two weeks leading up to that period, I was literally in my garage selling all our furniture and, and stuff like that to be able to get the flight to come back. Uh, and all, even kids' toys. It was a, it was a real horrible ordeal uh, mentally for myself and my kids who had to pull out of their school, which they loved. Um, we, we returned to UK and we had, had nowhere to live. Um, so we had to live with my mum and dad in the pub that they own in Dorset. And we had to live upstairs. Um, so as you can imagine, it's not, the, uh, it's not the greatest place to sort of bring up kids. And it was a definitely stark difference from living on the Gold Coast so you know we went from 300 days of sun sand a year or like you know you put you in a very happy mood and we went to come when we come back it like this you know the weather worked great it was outside a pub everyone drinking smoking really boisterous lots of swearing lots of aggro um so it was it was a really tough time on everyone mentally we also weren't entitled to a single thing from the government either because uh, we lived out the country for so long, so even as a veteran, like, I wasn't even, we weren't even char entitled to like child benefits or anything. And um, we had very many, many sleepless nights wondering what was next. I was getting con constantly rejected for work because I'd lived out the country. So I rejoined the Corps of uh, Engineers again in January 2016. Um, unfortunately, not long after being in, my, my best friend, Sergeant Nathan Shinwell, 
commit suicide on camp in the sergeant's mess. He wasn't in a great place mentally. Um, there was alcohol involved, um, which a lot of the time there is. And um, it was horrible standing there at his eulogy, um, doing, you know, doing a full eulogy at his funeral, while his two, two sons were sat in front of me, uh, never going to see their father again. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to my injuries that I succumbed to in, uh, on returning to the army uh, with, my, with my shins, uh, I was told I wouldn't be able to pr promote, so I couldn't do any career courses and stuff like that, which is, you know, really frustrating given my experience and, you know, qualifications um, that I'd done in my own time. So, um, and I wasn't, the so I signed off because I wasn't entitled to a medical discharge either because I could still technically do a job. So this was uh, at the point when the clock started ticking. So I basically, like everybody else who leaves the military, had to, you know, work hard, get my head down over 12 months and basically set myself up for getting out. So I straight away started networking, creating an inner circle of influence, which is ridiculously important. Anywhere in any walk of life, you need to build a strong network of people. You won't do everything alone. Had to learn some new skills. So uh, I did like a level seven in executive coaching and mentoring, which was uh, more of a, uh, to build on some knowledge rather than the qualification itself. But I was adamant I was going to, you know, start a, a, a successful coaching business. Personal development was a daily part of my life anyway, but I just kind of had to ramp it up. This can be everything from, you know, reading, doing courses, networking, uh, listening to podcasts, all this kind of stuff, just constant positive input into my mind, you know, to help me construct what I wanted to do in the future. And that's also where I had to learn how to really create a brand and what makes a strong brand. And that led me to leaving the army in September 2018 for the second time. So this is where I created my kind of like my brand around myself and being the best version of you. So obviously coaching is a big part of that. I've got many coaching clients I work with from different parts of the world. Um, led some people to some fantastic success in, in business. Uh, one of my clients recently, well, over the last few months, started with a, a business card and a logo. And he's now in a full facility with a full sports massage therapy and physio setup um, and rehab place in the heart of Hereford. I do a lot of talks, you know, to, like this online. Uh, but I do also do a lot of in-person talks around the countries. I love doing talks like this at schools um, because sort of working with teenagers is a passion of mine because they're at that kind of age where they're just kind of finding their identity, uh, getting their apron strings cut off a little bit. Um, so it's, you know, trying to give them this external positive influence to help maybe open their eyes a little bit to um, bigger and better things that are out there. And then I have my podcast, The AJ Roberts Show, um, where I interview people from all over the world, you know, high performers, um, people in all kinds of industries who have a, a positive message for the public. But whatever we do, every single one of us in life, it always requires a very, very large amount of discipline. OK, everything we do requires a bit of discipline. It's whether you get up in the morning, making your lunch, going to the gym, whatever it may be. You have to have a certain level of discipline to be able to carry out tasks. It depends, obviously, on what level that discipline is. It depends on how much you get done and how successful you make yourself. So what can you do to become the best version of you? OK, having a strong morning and evening routine is really important. OK, so mine starts from probably like 0, 5, 45. Um, I get up, do some reading, a bit of exercise always hydrate, listening to podcasts, audio books, always fantastic. Uh, I know a really good one called The AJ Roberts Show. <laughs> um, getting out there networking. Like your network is literally your net worth, ladies and gents. My, my network is absolutely massive, and it's so good because you, you're then creating resources that you can call upon at any given moment um, should you need to, to you know help things grow, help other people, work with charities like whatever that may be you can achieve so much stuff um, by creating a big network 
The people who don't succeed are the people who don't speak to anybody. Get outdoors, travel, you know, as much as we can. I know it's a bit limited at the minute, but there is, you know, regardless of restrictions, there's still the ability to get out and about. Clears your head, helps you refresh. You, you know, if you're like me, when you're out and about, that's when you get your best ideas. And just try and get rid of any, you know, negativity everywhere. That, uh, you know, really allows you to focus on just nothing but positive stuff. So one of the things I will say is to sanitize your social media in terms of um, if you've got sort of like negative or toxic people within those circles, just just unfollow them so you don't see it. You know, and, and part of your subconscious will just forget about them. And then you'll just put in positive affirmations and, and influence into your mind every day. And one of those things I do is my charity, uh, which I'm a patron of, Mel Cross Mission International. Um, I do it because it's like a drug to me, helping people, you know, not only become the best version of themselves, but people in hardships. So um, Mel Cross Mission International was uh, an amazing charity where we concentrate helping hun- hundreds of blood diamond victims and amputees from the civil war that was in Sierra Leone. Now, you know, many of you would have seen the film Blood Diamonds, you know, which is kind of based around that. Um, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of amputees um, and obviously their children who have been really badly affected from this civil war. So the charity focuses very much on them. So we do medical missions over there, uh, as you can see in the pictures, where we take boxes of medication over to Sierra Leone and we run like these medical missions where all these locals who have been suffering come they have little appointments, they get full checkups. Um, I take a load of kids off and do some football coaching. Uh, and then I uh, do talks with all the adults as well about empowerment and you know, trying to empower the people to just step out of their daily routine a little bit and you know, try and give, give it a crack to improve their situation because they can do it. And they're some of the most amazing people you'll ever meet. Um, I, I just love going there, love it. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully going back again in January. People always uh, ask me, you know, what do I think is the most powerful thing in the world or what's the, you know, uh, powerful sentence when talking about quotes and stuff like that. But for me, the two most powerful words in the world um, will always and forever be um, I am. Now, the reason that is the case is because everything that comes after I am literally dictates the trajectory of your life. So if you get up in the morning and you say to yourself, look, I'm going to have a crap day today. I'm not looking forward to work. You know, I am really fed up. It's just constant negativity. So everything it supersedes I am. And it's, when it's negative, you will live a negative life. But if you get up in the morning and uh, I am really looking forward to today. I am looking forward to going to the gym. I'm looking forward to this weekend away. All that kind of stuff. All positive stuff after the I am literally dictates the trajectory of your life because you end up becoming so more disciplined. You get more stuff done and you just become an all round aura of positivity. We do that also by creating a strong inner circle. Now, I talked about networking, but obviously you can have a huge like network, but having a strong inner circle is really important. We're, we are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. You know, so maybe have a think to yourself, who, who do I spend the most time with right now? They're not my friends, by the way. <laughs> um, and ask yourself, like, you know, can you see where these people showing up in your own personality so you can always see it can't you when somebody hangs around with a group of people for so long they kind of become like them a little bit we see it definitely seeing kids i was just about to say aj kids oh my god that that statement is so true isn't it that i suppose it happens for adults as well yeah 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 exactly that and um so it it, it, it'll be the same for myself so if i go for a weekend away with like loads of former squaddies and that I'll come back probably slightly different. Um, and or my, my wife will say, gosh, you can tell you've been away with the squaddies. Um, you know, and that's, that's, that's just the way it is. You can see, see personality traits showing up in yourself from other people. Um, but what you, what you need to do is ask yourself, what strengths and weaknesses do these people have on your own life? 
Now, if there's lots of weaknesses, you know, is there places where you can actually make changes within that inner circle? You know, that it doesn't have to be like ringing them up saying, we're done and hanging up, you know, or you can do that if you want. But it's, uh, it's you know, e quite easy using technology nowadays just to slowly like create a distance between yourselves. Um, like I just said earlier, sanitizing your social media, for example, you know, not going out with the people, seeing people all the time and just being bombarded with negativity. And then as you build your network and your network grows, like people on the same frequency and the same vibration as you will always attract, always. Like, and you're, and if, if you've been there before, you will know it instantly. And, you know, if you've been in a room full of positive people, you just know it straight away. Okay, so they're the kind of people you want to attract yourself with. And, you know, it's what makes my day it's one of the big reasons which makes my day so much more positive is having a strong inner circle. Also, time management is one of the key things you need to be really mindful of. Um, so a little task for those watching. Ask yourself, where do you waste your time during the average week? Now, I know for a fact that probably 99% of people straight away put social media now, if you can evaluate the time you save, like where can this be best used towards your goals? Now, the way to do this is um, the way to do this is write down like a little list of where you think you waste your time. So it could be like social media, Netflix, um, watching soaps, could be reading, you know, pointless magazines, could be playing PlayStation. You know, it could be all that kind of stuff. You write a list down and actually write the number of hours per day that you think, or time per day, you think you waste on it. Then put that into a week. So how many hours per week you think you waste on those things? See what the number is. And then sort of then write a list of where you think that time, doesn't have to be all of that time, but where you think that time could be best served during a week to help improve your current situation and you know improve on your own personal development and then as we lead on to this improving your growth mindset on on that time management can i just can i just add one thing aj yeah sure you know, a big revelation for me was like i used to always think oh, there's not enough time i haven't got time to do this i haven't got time to do that and um i can't remember who it was but someone said well jeff bezos only has 24 hours right <laughs> And look what he does and done and he's doing. And it was just like, yeah, that's true, isn't it? Like, you know, like we all say we're busy. We all say we can't do this. We can't do that. When in reality, you know, there's people out there absolutely doing 100x what 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 someone else is doing. Mm, um, yeah. And it comes down to wasting time, doesn't it? Like yeah. for me, um, I wanted to increase my meditation. And just in the last two and a half weeks, I've managed to find sev over seven hours because I'm tracking it and it's monitoring it, you know, whereas two and a half weeks ago, if you told me I had seven hours spare, that's a whole day, you know, I'd have laughed and said, of course I don't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly that. And, um, you know, um, once you get into the habit of improving your time management and also improving um, <clears throat> prioritization, it becomes so much better. You know, yeah. you can use... Bezos um, or um, Grant Cardone, Ed Milet over in the States is a good example. He's done a great podcast and saying how you can have three days in one because you can create three eight hour day, eight hour, you can, you know, a working day is kind of eight hours, but so you can actually create three days into one day, just how you use that time. Yeah, it's, no, um, I agree. It's, sorry, it's, sorry to interject there. I just, no, it's really quite powerful. Relevant. Sorry. No, it's, absolutely, mate. And it's, um, yes, yeah, so we, we improve our growth mindset by, doing that breaking out of our comfort zone doing things that make us slightly uncomfortable um because this is where most of the growth happens um if you you struggle with this you know it's important to seek out a mentor uh, whose results and mindset that you maybe admire it doesn't have to be someone you physically pay it could be somebody um who's already doing the things that you want to do and you can learn from them on a daily basis you know that's like intrinsic uh, mentorship a good way of doing this is reframing your failures as learning experiences. So I'll go back to when I had to move back from Australia, I come back with nothing. You know, I felt like I failed, even though I was stitched up. I felt, you know, just internally that I, I really failed and it was really hard mentally. So often if things 
uh, I, I find it quite difficult. I, I find I'm coming up against some kind of hardship. I often reframe my mindset to what I felt like when I come back from Australia and how I dealt with it, which then was very, you know, personally traumatic. So we can reframe these failures uh, as learning experiences. And I, and I can tell you now, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't had those experiences in the first place at all. It's how you learn from them that counts. And you do this by trusting your instincts. You know, we get better as it as we get older, like 100%, and having that little bit of self-belief. And by setting big goals, okay, I always say to people, like, set your goals big all the time. You know, if you if you want, want to set yourself out to make 100K, don't set it at 100K, set it as a million. Well, I always try and 10X what you actually want to set out. And the reason I say that is because if you try and aim for that million, the chances are you're easily surpassed 100. Even if you get to 300, 400, 500, you completely smashed that initial target because you've 10x your actual goal. Now, the benefits of goal setting are really quite straightforward. You know, those of you who have done it will see the benefits. Helps you focus your attention on what you want. Helps you develop the strategies and plans for what you want to do. Helps you mobilize efforts and your resources. Helps you enhance motivation and monitor progress and achievement and absolutely instills confidence in not only what you're doing, but in your own abilities, which will help you achieve more in a short period of time. And as a result, you absolutely, hands down, and if you apply all of this, you will always be on the road to being the best version of you. Thank you very much, guys. Wow, thank you, AJ. Um... Yeah, there was some really powerful stuff there. I, you know, I, 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 I love that. Hearing, you know, we need to look after ourselves, don't we? You know, Absolutely. so try, trying to be the best version of, for me, for Wayne, right, is only going to serve those that are around me as well as myself. So it's a no-brainer, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And it's, you know, if you, if you just smash yourself, um, you don't you not you don't serve others in, you know in the best way possible you don't show up as the best version of yourself so it's important to you know it's important to be selfish to be selfless now that doesn't mean as in being selfish in an arrogant way selfish is in doing things for myself to make sure i'm in the best place possible and i'm operating at full capacity to give the best version of myself yeah no i i definitely agree and and you you mentioned discipline like obviously you come from a military background so mm. so i'm guessing even as a child you know discipline was a big part of your life yeah um and i think that's what a lot of so most of the people watching this are going to be small business owners right and i think a discipline for they get rid of a lot of structure in their life when they go self-employed and work for mm. themselves so they sort of lose that discipline in what has to be done does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah so what's what any tips or tricks on on sort of rebuilding that discipline muscle so to speak yeah there's a few ways of doing it i think um like definitely nullifying your time is uh one of the key ways because um as soon as you get more discipline with your time you'll see the, the you know the benefits of that straight away because you're more productive and more efficient um a good way of doing it is setting yourself like five priority tasks every day um which you deem are the priorities and get those five tasks done first and everything else can wait till afterwards you know so put put your phone on airplane mode if you need to whatever it is so you're not you know getting notifications going oh what's sally doing on facebook you know um you you're concentrating on the priority task first. So when you get into a habit of doing that, it's so much easier um, because you then, you know, the, the old cliche, like how you do one thing is how you do everything. You then, do, you treat everything like that in your life and you just have so much more of a disciplined approach. Um, and again, it's, it's the consistency of it. Like, because when we test and measure anything, it's important well, to do it in the first place because otherwise, what's the point? Um, and once you start seeing the, the results of your improved discipline, you're just going to keep on doing it, keep on doing it. And then you'll look back and go, I'm glad I'm not that person anymore. Look what I'm doing now. 
Yeah, that, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, quick question on the on the photo that's on the screen then. Um, so English Veterans Awards, what, what, what was this? Yeah, so that was uh, actually quite recently. Um, I was nominated for the Veteran Owned Business of the Year and uh, Inspiration of the Year um, oh. for all the work I do like here in the UK um, and with the my charity and that. So... Um, the awards was about three weeks, three weeks ago. Oh, oh uh, so literally very recently. Yeah, yeah, it's was, it was about three weeks ago, and I got I got bronze award in both categories. Like so, um, I was I think it was about 10, 10 people in each category. Um, so yeah, it was a it was really strong competition, really strong, amazing night. Um, made some phenomenal contacts. Oh wow, fantastic! Well done, um, you know, and and the people who like won won the awards were incredible you know so again being around these type of people uh using it as a networking opportunity is already created opportunities off the back of that for me um you know moving forward which is going to help help even more people yeah yeah no definitely yeah. and you, you touched on obviously network and inner circle it's it's so so important mm. um you know what you surround yourself is an analogy an analogy that i use is like if you if I eat a Mars bar five times a day, you know I'm going to get fat because I'm going to fill myself up with with the wrong stuff, and w- information and beliefs and thoughts are exactly the same, aren't they? You know, um, like I gave up the news. <laughs> I don't know if, you, if uh, uh, other people have done the same, but it was the best, the most liberating thing I ever did. Was yeah, yeah. Stop watching the ten o'clock news because yeah. for half well, not, an hour, it's, it's never positive, day, is it? I was yeah. It, it, you know what? Out of three hundred and sixty-five ten o'clock newses, there must be what one or two positive stories yeah. at best. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, apart from that, it's just negative, isn't it? Yeah. Death, doom, gloom. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, but we all know that's part. Of, the thing is, we all know that's part of life anyway. So you don't need to be told before you go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last thought of the day to be hearing all of that. All of that. It was yeah crazy. Yeah, it's um yeah I, I haven't watched it in a few years now. Yeah, no, uh, it definitely was a big, a big change in in my outlook and mm. and my beliefs when I when I made that decision. And uh, the wife every now and then tries to pull it on, but I'll just keep myself busy. I'll get up, yeah. make a cup of tea, or you know, sort the dog out, or whatever to get out of that situation. I think um I think one of the key things is to just like if you're actually consuming content, and it's if you soon see as either negative or positive or whatever, just ask yourself, like, is this serving me in the best possible way? If it's not, change it. Because it's like, um, you wouldn't sit there and watch a really crap movie, would you? You, you, you change the DVD. Yeah. So if your, your circumstances, your environment's, you know, pretty rubbish, change it. Yeah. Change, change the movie, you know what I mean? Put the movie on that you want. Makes perfect sense, that. Yeah. Um... Right. Is there is there any closing words, AJ, or like where people can find out a bit more about you? Um, maybe find yeah, out so, about podcast uh, and stuff. Yeah. So I, as I put there, uh, my tags are there, uh, Mister AJ Roberts across the, pretty much most all platforms. Uh, you can visit my website, MrAJRoberts.com. dot com, or if they've got any questions or want to get in touch about anything or any inquiries, they can do so. Email inquiries at MrAJRoberts dot com. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I always try and reply to every single person who uh, who messages. Um, I do get several hundred DMs a day uh, because of my podcast, the AJ Roberts Show. Um, so if anyone's interested in checking that out, they can do so. It's on YouTube, um, Rumble, BitTube, places like that. It's um, pretty much on every platform. Uh, it's got its own Facebook channel as well, the AJ Roberts Show. If you want to check it out on there. And um, yeah, there's loads of interesting content, loads of interesting guests and stuff like that. It's um, yeah, it's really really expanded over the last like sort of six to twelve months. Oh, fantastic! No, that's that's great to hear. Uh, keep doing keep doing what you're doing. You know, and obviously the charity work sounds sounds epic. Um, the support and and the coaching and the speak speaking that you're doing. You know, it's all getting out the the right message to people that need it, isn't it? Mm, absolutely, mate. Yeah, this is about. Just about getting the, um, I guess the core message is just people just trying to be that little bit better every day. You know, there's no just understanding. There's no such thing as perfect. You just got to be a little bit better every day. Yep, 
I think that's a perfect way to end it. So um, thanks again, AJ. Uh, have a fantastic day. And for those watching, make sure that you you go and donate. Make sure you're sharing this event. And um, we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, guys. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Um, I just wanted to pull it out there for anyone listening that I offer business coaching, but also life coaching. My life is centered around something called the free Bs, which stands for body, business and balance. When you work with me as a coach, we tackle all three aspects of life. So you as an individual, body, mindset, health, fitness, knowledge, education, business B obviously stands for your business, improving, maximizing opportunities, elevating, making more money. And balance stands for your for friends, family, loved ones, you know, making time for everything in your life. And the free B's is the core element to that. If you'd like to learn more, I would ask you to reach out to me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you might be consuming my information. Um, or you can email me directly at wayne at offthetools.co.uk. I'm here waiting to assist you to elevate across all aspects of life. Have a good one. No excuses. Let's go.